Nothing's more important than team. Put the team first. Huckley spinning, reaches the ball at the goal line. The monster, Garrick Henry. in a row, the Titans get it done again. Welcome once again to the Mike Vrabel Show with the Titans head coach, I'm Mike Keith. Three in a row, as we just mentioned, for the Titans coming off a 31-17 win in Indianapolis. As we talked about it in pregame, we discussed that this was going to be a game where details matter, finer points matter, sticking with it mattered. All of it came into being at your last six minutes of the ball game. You did everything you needed to do to win on the road in the AFC South. Yep, it was 17-17, and, and we pretty much all figured it was going to be there. Um, with the game on the line, and, and I give our guys credit. They executed uh, in the critical situations um, throughout the game. And, uh, again, it didn't start great, and there were times where we had to overcome some things, and we did. Uh, it was great that we were able to finish the ball, uh, finish the game with, with the ball, you know, having the football and running the clock out, and, you know, that, that was, uh, you know, critical. When you preach certain things and the team follows through and it works, how much does it help you help you as preparation goes forward? Well, I think that um, they see. I think sometimes it helps both. Um, you know, when we lo- when we win and when we lose. I think that uh, you know guys will say, "Yeah, coach, you know we we didn't do this or we didn't do that," and you know we ended up losing a, a close game. And so they understand and they can see it. Um, but but it's always great to to try to learn from winning uh, and what those keys are each and every week. And, you know, again, every week's different. There's a new opponent. Uh, it's a new challenge in this league. And um, we'll, we'll have to do the same thing and prepare the same way, uh, but only better for Oakland. Time to get to Mike Vrabel's six-pack. We begin in the first quarter. Titans down 7 to nothing, But Ryan Tannehill guides the Titans down the field, completes passes to five different receivers, and converts on three third downs. Yeah, I thought this was a great drive. Um, you know, third and long, and that's not where we want to be. And they gave us a, a really cool coverage for, for Adam. He ran a great route. Uh, they, didn't, they didn't really go with him, uh, and Ryan was able to find him. Uh, and the ability for him to, to be able to get into the end zone, to, to break a tackle, to, to stay up, to not let his uh, knee go down and extend the ball, uh, that was really cool to see for, for Adam. And, and there was great protection. So there was a great pocket. We got rid of the football, and that's what it looks like, you know, that we're trying to create when we throw the football. It's 7-7, Titans, as we move to later in the first quarter. Titans turn the ball over, but the Colts are going to have to settle for a 53-yard field goal try. It doesn't work. No, nope, great effort from this unit, and we talked about forcing these guys to kick field goals, and I know they weren't in the red zone, but, you know, again, we feel like there was a low ball flight. Uh, guys got great effort, great push inside. They, they pushed one, two, three, went up, and that was really, you know, huge play by Austin, and, you know, I know Simmons is, you know, Jeff's in there with him, and, Again, those are critical plays. We go to the third quarter. The Titans see the Colts take the drive to begin the third quarter, score a touchdown. It's 17 to 7. The Titans need to answer, and you do on fourth and one. Yeah, it just felt like, you know, we we needed to, you know, we put a great drive together. We needed to keep the momentum going. Uh, They had scored coming out of half, um, well blocked, you know, Taylor and everybody up front, uh, point of attack. AJ uh, out there on the perimeter, you know, and AJ gives him a little shove. Uh, to get them in there, breaking tackles. You know, we got to take care of the football. You know, continue to to get the wrist above the elbow, and uh, he found the, he found the end zone. Thirteenth touchdown of the year for Derrick Henry. It's seventeen to fourteen. It seems to spark the defense because right away the defense makes a play, and it's Kevin Byard. Yeah, they came back to the play action. They had gotten us earlier. Um, you know, we recognize it. You know, you see Harold showing up in the middle of the pocket in play action. Um, forcing him into a mistake. He, he kind of flies the he flies over Doyle there, but that, that's what you have to get when they play pass. They max protect. we got to get some, some pressure into the middle of the pocket, get him off the spot, and then now the quarterback has to make a decision what he's going to do. And, uh, and Kevin was there, and 
you know, it was a huge play for us. 16 career interceptions for Kevin Byard sets up a field goal. We're tied at 17. We move to the fourth quarter with the Titans ahead 24 to 17. And Logan Ryan matches Byard with his fourth interception of the year. Yeah, they're trying to take a shot down the middle of the field. Um, great call by Dean. Even better execution by the players. Um, the, the quarterback was a little high. We need Rashawn to quit directing traffic and to block right there. Um, but, but a great catch. You know, we got to catch the ones they throw to us. Two plays later, you face third down and five yards to go and choose to take a shot to put the game on ice, and it works. I thought it was a great call by Arthur. I, I said, uh, go get it, be aggressive. And, uh, and he responded uh, with a great call. But again, it takes the execution. You see Ferk coming over there, getting a huge block. That ball felt like it was in the air uh, for what seemed like 15 minutes, waiting for it. And I said, just keep running, Khalif, just keep running. And uh, that's, a, that's a thing of beauty right there. And happy for him, um, secures it as he goes into the ground. First career touchdown for Khalif. It was a big one. It was a big one. Titans go on to win 31 to 17. You'll notice we left out a key play in that sequence. That's because it's our Bridgestone clutch performance of the game. And we'll show that to you right after the break as we continue on the Mike Rabel Show. The Bridgestone clutch performance of the game at Indianapolis, well, it's pretty obvious. Game tied at 17, Colts going to try a 46-yard field goal. Just, that's it, man, right there. That's the effort that we need each and every play. Nobody's taking a playoff, and our hope is that if they take the playoff, um, you know, we're going to capitalize. How does Crookshank get through there so easily? Well, you... Again, when you have a guy that comes off the edge, Kalu's gotten one, that widens the, the wing, and Finch is going to attack the tight end, there, there's a gap there. And uh, Dane does a great job of, of clearing his feet so he doesn't get tangled on their legs, uh, flattens out, blocks it. Ty Smith goes up to the level of the ball. You know, the hope is that if they take one play off and we don't, uh, we can make them pay. So the Titans get a block from Dane Crookshank, a return from Ty Smith, who also played a really nice game on defense, uh, gave a heck of an effort, but special teams. Brett Kern backs him up. Uh, Ryan Suckup makes all five of yep. his kicks. Ryan Santoso, your new kicker, four touchbacks in the ball game. You cover kicks well. Uh, overall, that special team's edge shows up in Indianapolis. It does, and those guys, you know, I think that Craig Aukerman and, and Matt Edwards do a great job, but the players, they're starting to become a sense of, um, you know, this core, like they want to go and they want to win the game. And I know we had a penalty on special teams, and, and Dane knows that he can't go down there and continue to chase the guy and, and get him in the back. And they had a return, and, and we have to do a better job there. But for the most part, we, we kicked the ball well. We punted it extremely well. We covered. Um, and then the huge play on the field goal block. And you're finding more special teams players. Raymond gets in there and shows up, not only on returns, but covering kicks. Other guys who get chances realize how important that is. Right. I mean, Hooker's a core player. Dane, I think Dane Crookshank's one of the better special teams players in this league. Um, he gets doubled and triple teamed on every punt. Uh, I think Bates has played well on special teams. Uh, Wood is our captain. Uh, David Long is improving a as, a, as a rookie special teams player. And, and there's many more players. I mean, Kevin Byard is our PP on the punt team. That's, that's how important uh, we believe uh, that, that play is. That, that, personal that protector? Correct, personal protector. He's the quarterback of the punt team, and he protects uh, Brett Kern. So now it's time for DD, Delta Dental. Delta Dental. The Delta stay, Dental gets stay the hot. Titan. Stay hot. He's trying to stay hot. He got it last week. Who is this week's Titan? Oh, wow. That is a lay down. He's got a kid that looks exactly like that, too. They, that could be a picture of his looks son. Looks like one of the Ewoks from Star Wars. Oh, no. wow. Dude, you didn't say that. Really? Come on. I mean, I made fun of our picture. I didn't even know, I know who it was. I so. know. I know. From now on, I'm going to make fun of the pictures. I mean, you can. You're the coach. It's your show. Delta Dental guess the Titan will reveal it coming back. And our gladiator of the game from a different site. You'll like this one. Stay tuned for more Mike Vrabel Show. Delta Dental guess the Titan. Can you guess the Titan? Can he guess the Titan? 
Mike okay, Vrabel. to stay hot, to stay on to a stay streak. Stay hot. Let's go with uh, our punter, Brett Kern. Oh, I think that's a good guess. Absolutely. Hey, he's a cute kid. And he is a child. I think it's Bryce. Yeah, looks just looks exactly yeah. like that. Hopefully, he doesn't still have those pajamas on. But uh, well, that's true. He looks like from 1973. Guy. Speaking of talented players, let's talk Khalif Raymond for a second. Okay. And this is a player who sort of grabbed everybody in training camp, did a great job, and he gets promoted to the active roster, and he is battling his rear end off, making things happen, scored the big touchdown the other day. Yep, he's improved, and, and he is a competitive uh, son of a gun. He has a competitive spirit. He was an undrafted player. He's been cut multiple times. Um, he's a grinder, and, uh, and he's worked to improve, and he's found a – you know, the way to help us uh, each and every game that he's been active. He's played on special teams. He returns kicks. Um, he, he went down there and he caught, he fair caught a punt last week. Um, so huge play. Um, he's tough. Uh, he, he understands what he's supposed to do at multiple positions and he's ready to step in. And he can run. Yep, he can, he can fly. Yeah, run, has run in the low four threes at different points in his career. For our Gladiator segment this week, it was really cool because Amy Wells caught him right after the game in Indianapolis. With that adrenaline still going, here's this week's Geico Gladiator of the Game. Khalif Raymond, when you only have one catch in a game, why not make it a 40-yard <laughs> touchdown? Tell me about that play and what you were seeing. We set it up a little bit earlier in practice, man, and the uh, coach was like, man, when you just, just leave your quarterback room and, and stare stuff him a little bit, and uh, I, you, if you saw the ball by Ryan, man, it was perfectly thrown. So uh, all I had to do was just take advantage of that opportunity. So, For you, you're a fast guy. You're a speed guy. That's one of your things. How were you able to flip it into the next gear like that? Um, I mean, we, you know, when it's a play that you know that has a potentially come to you, I mean, I think you get a little bit more amped up for it. So, uh, no, I just I just had to make sure I was mentally prepared, knew what I had to do, so that way when I went out there, I didn't have to think at all. So, Being in the end zone for the first time officially, uh, <laughs> was it something special? Oh, definitely. Uh, as you can see, I laid there for a little minute, man. I was just uh, saying prayers, being thankful, man. And, uh, I mean, it took, it took four years for that one. So uh, um, I was just thankful for the moment. In a game like the game against the Colts, where it's so emotional and there's so much on the line, how special was it for you to be able to contribute to the Titan success? I think that's what makes it special. I mean, when you can have a play, but let alone that, that it becomes a win, you get to relish in that moment and uh, to know that you contributed, man, to go and see your brothers like, man, you know, we, we did this together. So that was awesome. The win over the Colts puts the team in a pretty good spot in terms of the AFC South. What does that do for you as a team, knowing that you're not necessarily playing from behind anymore? One thing that Coach Rabel says, man, just, you know what I'm saying, keep picking them off, man. Just keep going. Next week, just keep just keep grinding, keep churning, man. And uh, once the game ends, let the game go because we still have more work to do. So uh, I think it gives us a little momentum, but more than anything, I think it continues to motivate us because it's a, it's, we still have the rest of the season to play, and I think we want to come out and uh, keep going well. So The Titans have seen a lot of success recently. How do you go from – being confident and staying confident and making sure that you don't get a little lackadaisical or start losing some focus. I think that's the cool thing about the organization and the kind of coaching staff and the teammates and the players and um, from top down everybody. I mean, there's everybody's so driven. Everybody wants to be successful. So I think that that naturally comes with it when you have a, a organization and a team that cares about winning. So it's awesome to see. No position coach in Titans history has been more productive or successful than Jim Washburn. Washburn was the Tennessee Titans defensive line coach for 12 years, and his list of hits makes him an all-time chart topper. Javon Curse is an obvious number one, as is Albert Hainsworth, but how about his surprise hits like Kyle Vandenbosch and Jason Babbitt? How about his absolute shockers like touchdown Tony Brown and Carlos Hall? What about the unforgettable remake of pro bowler Kevin Carter? Year in and year out, Jim Washford took whatever talent was available to him in the Titans defensive line and turned the group into one of the NFL's best. That's why, as he turned 70, the man known as Wash continues to be celebrated among all who love the Tennessee Titans. Welcome back to the Mike Vrabel Show. The Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Awards. That has been a thing, with that name at least, since 2007. 
The Mr. Football Awards have been in existence since 1985, and yesterday at Nissan Stadium, it was time to present them again. Ten of our state's top players received Mr. Football Awards, six in Division I, three in Division II, and a kicker of the year was awarded. Over 400 people attended, media from all over the state there, and look at that crowd, that showing, and that excitement. You went through this when you were a high school player. You were a Mr. Ohio finalist. You know what it means. It was a runner-up, but uh, this is this is awesome for these guys to be able to come in there and share the moment with their with their families. Um, and, and some of these guys, obviously, you, they're going to be playing. You know, I mean, these guys are going to go on to the next level. But some of these guys, because they are really good players, they've helped their team, and their teams are going to be in the state championship, and everybody can come and and, and see these guys and. And, and, su and support them and, and promote the, the high school football here in the state of Tennessee. And so then all 10 guys go to the Titans locker room. Their families are waiting there for them. And there is a locker with a Titans jersey with their name and number there. And so then each of the guys put on the jersey. They have their picture taken in a Titans jersey, all 10 of them. It's an incredibly special yep. moment. Who knows if one day one of those guys will be uh, putting some pads it's into happened. that jersey. Yeah? It, it's happened, yes. Who? A couple of times. Do you remember well, who? Michael Orr is probably okay. the best known. Right? Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. So thanks to everybody and thanks to the TSSAA for what they do. And from our organization, our community relations department, thumbs up again this year for a great job on the Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Awards. When we come back, Mike Vrabel's keys to success in Oakland. That's next on The Mike Vrabel Show. The Titans are 7-5. and five. The Oakland Raiders are 6-6. Six and six. 325 start time in Oakland this Sunday. Time now for Mike Vrabel's keys to success. Let's begin on third and fourth down for the Raiders. Got to stop them on those third and fourth downs. We do. We have to get back. This team is, uh, you know, they're in the top ten in the NFL. They're, they're seventh and third and fourth down. They don't commit a lot of penalties offensively. So, therefore, just like with the Colts, we said they have a lot of third and manageable down in distances, third and four, third and three. And, you know, they're around 45, 46%. So they do a nice job there. It'll be a huge challenge for us defensively. All right. Second key is score touchdowns in the red zone. Something the Titans have done well this year. We have. We have to continue uh, with that confidence. We have to get our players to understand how critical it is to, to be able to get down there, know what they're doing. Some teams' identities change a little bit. Coverage has changed. They, uh, is this a pressure team? Is this a zone team? You know, it'll be critical that they understand that, that we get them to understand that, and how we're going to try to attack them and, and be able to score touchdowns. All right, now the last one, our punt versus their punt. I don't understand what that means. Yeah, we have to be able to win this field position. Okay. And, and they are averaging, um, you know, 11 and a half yards of return. And it's critical that, that we're able to, to punt the football, go down there and cover it and not lose you talked about hidden yardage and we always talk about that when we give them the ball and they give it to us back how much yardage is gained or lost on field position and so um you know we feel that's going to be critical and keep the penalties low too just three for 33 at indianapolis that, that would that's be nice. right in mike vrabel's wheelhouse yeah we're trending down eight six and three the last three games and um that that can be a huge key for us if if we're able to to play disciplined uh out in oakland in terms of travel to the West Coast, how difficult do you really think it is coming from the central time zone? I, I, I mean, I, it doesn't, we're going to leave whenever we need to get there at 430 like we always do uh, on Saturday. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll set our alarms when, when they say that we need to get up and we'll go play the football game. So you don't feel like doing anything special for West Coast travel is worthwhile? Um, no. I mean, I don't really, I think the, the best thing to do is, is to, to prepare, um, to understand the opponent, to know the player that we're going against, what's his skill set, how's he like to play, is he fast, is he long, is he, is he a powerful player, who's covering me, uh, those are the things that are critical, not, uh, you know, not what time it is or the daylight savings or, you know, anything like that. You just really stick to football. I try. It's boring but I like no, it. No I don't want to say it's boring but I mean some people like to take through every detail 
and you just don't feel like that's necessary, maybe that's a waste of time. No, it's not a waste of time. I think that there are certain things, you know, we'll have a little longer flight and then they'll feed us well and, you know, we'll have to stay hydrated, but, you know, we'll, we'll be ready to go and, and hopefully uh, prepared. And hopefully come back eight and five. Okay. That works? That will work. All right. The Titans going to take on the Oakland Raiders. Again, the Titans are seven and five. The Raiders are six and six, battling for a playoff spot. Kickoff is set for 325 Central Time. Titans Radio. What time is that Pacific time? 135. Gotcha. 125. 125. The, you've thrown me. The game is on the air here on Titans Radio at 230 Central. For Mike Vrabel, who got me, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us.